Welcome back to another video on building your own version of Airbnb. Now in the last couple of videos we've set up our database and our onboarding uh, pages as well. So now I'm going to zoom right into host home because this is where we're going to start building out features for the host to upload an apartment. Um, and then to add multiple images to that apartment as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pop onto this page here and I've got a couple of options. I could either add a little icon up the top just like that, a little plus sign where the user can um, upload an apartment or I can come in here to add a component. I can scroll down to buttons and there's this lovely little button here called an action button. Usually sits roughly uh, around about the kind of bottom right hand corner of the screen. It's nice and reachable by thumb when you're using this on the phone. I'm going to make that link to a new screen. I'm going to call this one, we'll make it a form actually. I'm going to call this one new apartment and that's going to, by default, create a page with a form for us. Now, of course, uh, as ever, Adalo is just going to move the page up there. I've got to bring it right back beside it. I can keep it wherever I like, but I like having it kind of side by side, just for a little bit of visual organisation. So we're going to come in here uh, and uh, we've got a form element. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this interface, um, if you're still struggling to follow along a little bit, then I highly recommend watching our video series on the basics of Adalo. But um, here in the form, I'm going to connect this to the apartments and this is going to allow us to create a new apartment. So this is where it all begins. Um, for a, a guest or a renter to be able to come on and browse an apartment, you know, book their, their holiday, um, take a payment, etc. To do that, we need to have apartments on there in the first place. Now we've got this big immediate problem. Look at this form, it's running right off the screen. And of course it is because if I go and look at my database, I've got tons and tons of fields underneath the apartment. So there's a couple of things we're going to do. Number one, we're going to trim down what fields we actually enter on this page. And then number two, we're actually going to add a couple more pages to do everything that we want to do. So. I'll just start by taking the basic details of the flat here. So I'm going to delete the, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, all these different, I guess you could call them amenities, and I'll also delete rating and main image. And that leaves us with a much more approachable uh, list of items. So we've got the name of the apartment, and I could maybe give that something more descriptive, like uh, what do you want to call this apartment? And that could be anything, could be like a modern, cosy flat or whatever. Um, I put that in there, set is required, same with the address, same with the city, same with the country. You can add in things like postcode, etc. if you want. Personally, I'm not too fussed. Um, it says here set automatically, so I'll hit add automatic field. And uh, we'll just set the rating by default as zero. The host is already set, so that's already going to cover uh, who the host is. And then everything else like, uh, you know, gym, hot tub, all this kind of thing, we're going to specify on the next page. So what we're going to do here is we're going to let this submit button create the the apartment. Clearly not every piece of information is going to be filled in, but that's okay. And what I'm going to do is instead of, you know, by default, a, a, a form is going to create an apartment a row or whatever else you select, and then it's going to take you back to the previous page. What I'm going to do here is delete that link. I'm going to add in another link of my own. This time it's going to go to a new screen. I'm going to call that new apartment details. Now, it's not very descriptive, you can probably give it a better name than that, but I'm going to select the form, pop that in. Again, Adalo is going to throw it all the way up there. Adalo in general will just put uh, screens right at the top, uh, kind of right, right. I guess at the top of whatever uh, row you've got here, but then at the right of it. I was trying to find a word to explain that, there, but that's not really a good word for it. Um, rightmost maybe. So um, again, when I've got this second form here, it's going to ask me data collection. And again, I'm going to say apartments and you might be wondering, well, why am I creating another apartment? I've just made one and it's not even finished. Well, actually, because we've linked this page uh, to the next one, the submit button, as, it, as you can see here, will automatically send this data to the new uh, apartment details screen. So it's automatically going to tell this screen that we've got an apartment. So the current apartment is the one that we've just created. And so on this screen, my form now has an additional option, which is that I can update the current apartment. And so again, I've got too many fields uh, on the page. I'm going to delete name because I've already got that. I've got street address, I've got city, I've got country, I've got rating. I'm not going to bother with main image either because we'll sort that on the next screen. So now I've just got these interesting little details about the flat that I can specify. So what's the number of bedrooms? Um, you know, what is, has it got a gym, etc. One thing to keep in mind here, 
um, make sure that for your checkboxes you untick this field is required because otherwise the user will be required to uh, tick these before they're allowed to go to the next screen when actually we want to leave it as an option. By default, it's set to false. It's a true or false Boolean field. Has it got a dream? Uh, true it does or false it does not, you know? Um, yes or no. So, with that in mind, we'll go to the submit button and you'll notice here instead of saying create apartment, it says update apartment because it's going to update the current apartment that's been passed over by this screen here. So whenever you link something together on a DALO, it will pass over whichever pieces of data it can. Again, it says link back, but we're not going to do that. We're going to add another new screen. And this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting because I'm going to show you how to build um, a I guess a couple of screens that can let you take as many images as you like. This is how you can do a sort of multi-image upload. And in theory, you could use this method for, um, you know, adding multiple of anything, but I'll show you how it works. I'm going to select just a blank um, sort of app bar screen. I'm going to call this Add Images. Oops. I'm going to hit Create Screen. Again, I think Lolo is going to throw it up there. And you can see I'm still wrestling uh, with myself to stop calling it uh, Adalo and start calling it Adalo, which I believe is its proper name. <laughs> and, uh, so I come on here. Instead of adding a form this time, I need a little bit more flexibility. So I'm going to come straight into the components menu. Uh, I'm going to go to forms and fields. And I'm going to grab this image picker. And then, now the image picker is kind of defaulted to the name too. Uh, I think it's because we've got another one up here for the profile photo. Uh, so we'll just call this uh, image upload one. That one's really important, and I'll show you why in just a second. But we've got an image uploader. We're going to add a button in here. Drag that out a little bit, a little bit of width. I'll call that add more images. And I'm just going to add another button in here, a slightly different name. Uh, we're going to call that finish adding images. And so the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to let the, the user add as many images as want by constantly clicking the add more images button. But we are going to have this option to finish adding uh, uh, images whenever, you know, well, whenever they're finished adding images, funnily enough. So um, I'm going to give it a slightly different icon. I'll give it a different color just to differentiate it. I'll go for my secondary color down the bottom there. And it's looking pretty good. Drag it out a little bit just to make sure the word fits. We'll make sure this one matches. And so here's what we're going to do. So whenever the user clicks this little box here, and I could maybe even put a little bit of text above that actually. Let me just drag that down slightly more. But whenever the user clicks this little box, they're going to be prompted to upload an image of some sort. And then once that's uploaded, I can make use of it. So I can say choose image. Do that down here. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let's say 22. Yep, that should do it. Again, you can definitely play around with things like fonts and all that kind of thing to get this a little bit better looking. Um, it's certainly not beautiful, but it does the trick. Um, and so when I say add more images, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, but I need to add a new collection. So I'm going to hit new collection. I'm going to call this one images. Now, you'll notice, um, I mean, clearly it's let me create a new collection, although if I go into my database, you'll see it popping up there um, and I can edit it the exact same way. So I'm going to have... Um, a collection of images and each image is going to be related to an apartment and we're going to say an apartment could have multiple images but an image can only belong to one apartment and this is how we're going to create the ability to add multiple pictures to a single apartment because if you go in Airbnb the majority of flats are going to have 20 to 30 different images it tends to be the more images the more bookings you get so I'm told um, so I'll go here to image uh, and we'll just we'll call that the image nice and simple the images image and we'll change the name. We'll just change that to ID. So now for every image, we're going to we're going to note down which apartment it belongs to, and we're also going to note um, what the image is. Now, if you remember from uh, the very first video, we added this component called the image slider. Uh, here it's down at the very bottom, and the image slider essentially, rather than simply pick a single image it lets you pick a list of images. So it works exactly like a list or a form where you specify the data source and then it pulls in um, each image from that data source. So what we're going to do later on is we're going to add a page off of the guest homepage where you can view the apartment details and then there'll be an image slider which takes all of the images related to that apartment and pulls them through. Now if that's a little bit um, 
uh, difficult to kind of map out in your head. It's easy for me because I've spent two days doing it already. Um, but if you're if you're finding that a little bit difficult, don't worry. It'll make a lot of sense when we actually um, go in and build that page as well. So it says add more images. Let's go ahead then. We've created our collection. Um, we're now going to start creating an image. Now, we need to give it a unique ID. In other words, a file name that nobody else is ever going to use again. So we'll call this current apartment. We'll do a little hyphen and then we'll grab the date and time. So current time. Of course, I've got to click this little icon which will let me format that time. Lots of different ways you can do it. Relative, which is always the default, will say the time relative to now. So it could be a few minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, a month. That's just how it will show up on the app. But I'm trying to save a unique piece of data. So if I hit no format in here, it's got the date and then it's got the time often right down to the exact second. So if I hit that, then, well, Nobody can upload the um, you know the same image to the same apartment at the same time. Therefore, this will be a unique ID. Of course, the apartment is going to be the current apartment, which is getting carried all, all the way from this screen through to this one. And the image is going to go to form inputs. I'm going to pick image upload one. If you remember, that was the name of this image picker that I put in there. So I'll hit done. And essentially that will upload an image, but we want to go a little bit deeper than that. There's two other things I want to do. Um, I already specified uh, the ability to um, have a main image on an apartment. So I want to say, I'm going to update the current apartment and I'm also going to add this image to be the main image of that apartment. So I'll put image upload one again. But of course, I only want to do this once, otherwise it's gonna change the main image every single time I upload it. So I only want the first time I upload it to be the main image. So I've hit advanced, I'm gonna put, when does this happen? Well, it happens sometimes. Okay, so this action will only happen if the current apartment's main image is equal to empty. What that means is if it doesn't have an image, you know, if it's just empty, there's nothing there. Um, if it is null, as we call it in programming, then we will upload the image to the main image. If you're not, not sure what a, a null variable is, go check out No Code Fundamentals, look at the data types um, and variables videos, and we talk about null variables in there, um, in the data types video specifically. But essentially by doing this, one or two things is going to happen. We're always going to upload the image to the images folder, but of course, we now can add this main image here if we need to. There's one other thing we need to do, of course, which is link to, um, or, or we're going to link to another page, but the reason we're going to do that is so the user can add as many images as they like. So I'll show you how that's going to work. I'm going to take my, cop my add images page. I'm going to hit control and C to copy it. I'm going to paste with control and B. You'll see a clone of that page has appeared up here. And I'm just going to drag that down and line it up. So these pages are going to look exactly the same to the user. A couple of wee changes I want to make. You see that it's got a little back icon. Well, I want to turn that off. I also want to turn it off on the previous page so that a user uh, cannot navigate places I don't want them to go. So now I've got these two that look exactly the same. And what I'm essentially going to do is just build a loop between them so that they add one image here. That links them to this page. They add another image again, so on and so forth, until they decide they've added enough and they want to hit finish adding images. The reason I've got to do that is Adalo does not support at the minute the ability to change the input of an image picker. So I can't come in, find my image picker and delete it so they can upload again. So I've got to refresh the page and, and clear it so they can add another image by going to the next page. Now in theory, they could just keep clicking uh, the image, changing it, hitting the button again, um, but that's not always obvious to a user. So I think this method is a little bit better as it just refreshes it, but doing that would be pretty easy as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit link and we're going to go to add images too. So that's the second screen and it's going to push the current apartment data. It also push the current image, but we can ignore that. So we're going to do that. And then what we're going to do over here is broadly the same thing. We're almost going to leave it exactly the same, but I'm going to make one change. I'm going to add it back to add images. And it does pop up, by the way, and it says data is missing from this link. So it will say the current apartment will no longer be uh, sent. Now that's okay. What it's saying is because I'm linking back to this page, it's not going to send the apartment. The reason it's not going to do that is because this page here, new apartment details, is already sending the apartment in the first place. So I'm going to confuse the Add Images screen if I try to send current apartment from two different screens at once. By default, this Add Images screen always has a default apartment from this flow. 
And so if I then try to send it to the same apartment again, that would cause issues. So when this links back, it will not send the current apartment, but that's fine because we've already got it from the link through from these pages. It's a little bit confusing, um, but essentially you don't really have to worry about it. It just means it's already got the data, so it's not going to resend it. So I'm going to hit done there. One other thing I have to change, this is a bit I said uh, we need to change. This currently says image upload one, but we don't want it to come from image upload one because that's the input on this screen. Actually, we have to come here. We've got to change this one to image upload two on the second screen. We'll hit done and then we'll come back here. We should now have an extra form input and you can see that's immediately changed to image upload two. So that's really important. Do not miss that bit out, otherwise you'll break the entire thing because it will keep trying to take the image from the first page. But of course, um, it can access that because it's on a different screen and so it will just break and not work. Um, and so with that loaded up there, essentially what's going to happen is every time I hit add more image, it'll upload my image, it'll take me to the next page, I'll upload my image, it'll take me back and it will just go on an infinite loop until the user hits finish adding images. And all we'll do here is say, okay, cool, link back to the host home. It will send the current apartment data, but we don't need to use it. And of course, we want to do the same on this page and just keep these pages completely uniform, completely matched up. So if we do that, we've got the host home. Now there's one other thing that you could do. Um, clearly a user could upload an unlimited number of images here. Now, most likely your average user isn't going to do that, but whenever you, um, whenever an, a user uploads an image, it's going to take up some amount of storage on the Adalo app that you're running. You know, it might be that you have 10 gigabytes of data and each image is a megabyte and a gigabyte, by the way, is 1,000 uh, or slightly over a thousand uh, megabytes. So by the time somebody uploads a thousand images, that could, you know, in theory, that could fill up your entire server and then suddenly you'll have legitimate users trying to add images in and they can't do it. So we can put a limit on how many images can be added to the one apartment. And you could take this and apply it to how many images a single host could upload, for example, and all this kind of thing. But I'll show you the basics. Let's say we go into our database and we're going to add a little counter. We want to count how many images have actually been uploaded because right now we don't really know how many have been uploaded that pertain to this particular apartment. So I'm going to add a property and I'm going to give it a number and I'm going to just call this current images. It's just a number. Uh, and then I'm going to call this one maximum images. I'll call that maximum images count actually, just to make it a little bit clearer. We'll call that a count. Now, Adalo does have the ability to count um, a different rows. So look, if I come in here and I try to select some random piece of information, um, you know, you can come in, uh, let me go somewhere that's got data, sorry. Uh, you can come in here and you can get the count of an apartment. So there's always a few ways to do this kind of thing, but I'll show you my preferred way. So I've just made those two, um, that maximum and that other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right back to new apartment and I'm going to add an automatic field. We're going to set the current images by default to zero because at this stage in the flow, nobody's uploaded any images. So, you know, on the new apartment screen, before we get to any of this add image, we're going to put zero. And then we're going to do another uh, add automatic field, which is a maximum. Now you can decide how many you want. I'm going to go with 20. So a user can upload a total of 20 images per apartment. You could limit it however you like. So I'm going to put that in there. And so under the hood, you know, automatically, you know, completely invisibly, we've just added uh, the current images count as zero and the maximum images count as 20. So when we come in here, we can take these buttons and add conditional visibility. So we'll do sometimes visible. And we can say these will only be uh, visible if the current images count is less than the maximum images count. So this button will only show up if the current images number is less than the maximum, because once you hit the maximum, you don't want to see that button anymore. And again, you'll just have to uh, repeat the same thing over here on this other page. You've got to keep these more or less exactly the same. Whoops, what was that? Uh, so we'll say this will only be visible if the current apartments, just do the same thing again, current apartments images is less than and it's important, by the way, not to pick less than or equal to because then you'll essentially allow the user to upload one extra 
image because if it's equal to then they can get to 20 the button will still be there so they can add a 21st one before it will cut off so less than is quite different from less than or equal to and there we go so now that should work and essentially if I come in here if I add an apartment it'll add all the way through I'll be able to choose the images back and forth until I decide I'm done then I can hit the green button and that's that now, the other thing we'll need to do is just make sure that these images actually show up. So I'll pop in here uh, on the host home, we're going to add a list of apartments. Now, I'm going to do something slightly different from the demo app that I showed you in the uh, original preview video. I'm going to use this image list. I actually I think it looks a little bit better. And I'm going to say this is a list of apartments. I'm going to filter that by the logged in users' apartments. So this will filter it by for the logged in user, all apartments related to them, i.e. all the apartments that they are a host of. So that will filter by that. You can sort it however you like, you can do name, A to Z, etc. You can do newest, whatever you want. The current, uh, the, the image will pull from the current apartment's main image, because you can see if you go in and go to images, and it just creates an infinite loop, because it doesn't know exactly which image you want to use, so it will just keep going on and on and on. So I'm going to pick the main image. And if there's no image, I can just say don't show anything or whatever, but of course there will be an image. And then you could add an action in here to show that the details. So you could say like, oh, maybe I'll create a page where every time they click an apartment, it lets me go in and edit the details again. I'll leave that to you. This video and the, and the subsequent videos will give you all the skills you need to do that. Um, but there's probably five or six different screens like that I could create that won't really teach you anything new. So I'll leave that up to you. Um, and you'll see uh, more examples of creating screens like that as we go through. Um, so we've got the apartment name is going to show up as a variable. For a subtitle, let's just add the city, for example. Uh, you could also do a rating, you know, you could add like, um, you could do a like rating out of five. That won't divide it, that will just put a little uh, slash icon there. So we can just show, just just show a little bit of information for a bit of style. For the icon, I'll probably turn that icon off so you'll notice that gets rid of the little triple dots on it, but you could have that as a clickable action. Uh, and then image style, again, you could make this whatever you like. I'll just leave it as square, I think that works. And maybe put a little bit of shadow on it as well. So there we go. So we've just created a uh, really, really quickly the ability to, to create a new apartment and uh, obviously to uh, go in and, you know, show your apartments on your home screen. So I'll go in, um, I've already went and uh, created um, some default test stuff, so I'll just delete all that, so we can start nice and fresh here. So I'll delete these records, um, and uh, I've also I've created a login for myself under Nile plus one at nocode.tech. Just a really quick tip by the way, because I think it's quite useful, whenever you're testing an app, what you can do if you've got a Gmail account, you can do your whatever your username is, like for mine, mine is Niall at nocode.tech. Um, so you can do, you know, Niall and then you can do a plus sign and then you can write whatever you want. So if your email address was johnsmith at gmail.com, you can do johnsmith plus 12345 at gmail.com and that email will always send through to you. But typically a web service uh, will let you do it. So you can sign up with the same email address to multiple accounts, which is really good for testing stuff because it means you can make you know, multiple accounts with your own email without having to go and create extra emails, etc. Um, really handy tip. It's probably something I should do a separate video on. Anyway, let's hit the preview button. Now, I'm probably logged in by default because I've already made an account, so I'll just quit out of there. Um, so, assume you've already went and signed up because I have. Uh, I'll just do nail plus one at nocode.tech, put password in. So this is taking me to the host home. Now clearly no list is showing up yet because I've not actually added an apartment. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to call this apartment, call it anything, call it a, a cozy, comfortable abode. People give them all sorts of names on Airbnb. Uh, I'll call this 64 Zoo Lane. Uh, funnily enough, Google Maps will actually accept Zoo Lane in London as a address and it takes you into the middle of the London Zoo. Well, I'm presuming it's a London Zoo, it was a zoo of some sort. Um, so I hit create apartment, that will take me to the next page. We'll do two bedrooms, three bathrooms. I'll show you the zoo thing later, by the way. Um, we'll say it's got a gym, we'll say it's got a hot tub. Do you know what? We'll say it's got a pool as well. Sounds like a brilliant place. We'll hit update apartment. 
and then this is where we get into our image loop. Now I've downloaded a few images already, uh, just to save us some time. So uh, pick something, pick a slightly more modern picture actually. Uh, so I can do that and I can hit add more images. So that's going to upload it. It's going to take me to the next page. I can then do, um, I can hit this here, add more images, take me back to the page, click this. And you can see it's just going round in a circle. Now I'm adding three, but I could add as many as I like, hit add more images. And then I'm all done now, so I can hit finish adding images. And there you go, it pops up right there. You can see it's brought up the name of the apartment, it's brought up the city of London, and it said the rating out of five. Now clearly this is new, so it's not got a rating, so it's zero out of five by default. Um, and the thing just to bear in mind, if I pop into my database and I look at the images, they'll all have uploaded now. So there you go, there's three different images, they're all assigned to that apartment, and uh, it all looks pretty good. So, the... The next thing to do really is is to, to move on and start building out the guest side of uh, our Airbnb app here. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll do that in the next video and we'll put in a list similar to the host one we've got but we'll also start setting up the ability to search those apartments, um, the ability to go into detail and of course the ability to book a stay as well. So jump in the next video and we'll get stuck in.